let's learn how to set up a GBT that is dedicated to helping us file for taxes. Now, this idea came from my Twitter here where I was creating a GBT for the company I currently run. And I got some responses from this and I was like, you know what, let's just make a video on this. We're gonna go ahead and dive in today on how to create a GBT that's either for a W-2 or in the context of a business. Now, the reason this is even incurring or why I'm doing this is because I created this right here, as you see right above me for this business I currently run and Particularly, the reason I created it was the fact that we sell internationally. Therefore, when you sell internationally, there's a lot of taxes that have to do with different countries, EU laws, VATs, UK, a bunch of different stuff. In this video, though, I'm going to show you how to set up specifically for whatever business you run, or you could alternatively take this perspective and use it as for a W-2 employee. Let's go and jump in. Welcome back, y'all. This is Corbin AI, where I'm showing you how to use artificial intelligence in a lot of different metrics. In this video, we're going to learn how to do our taxes. Super exciting stuff, y'all. Uh, this should make this whole process a lot easier, though. So the way we want to do this is let's first identify our use case. We're going to say you are going to be used for the purpose of helping. And I am covering it, y'all. Let me go and put myself in the middle here. I'll shrink down like Willy Wonka. Oompa Loompa. Okay. Um, <laughs> You're going to be helping, uh, you're going to be used for the purpose of helping us file to uh, give tax advice for our business. Ready to help. And I should probably give this disclaimer. Maybe don't use this completely in the process of dealing with your taxes. As you'll see here, we're going to integrate the types of software we use in our tax process. This is more of just like, hey, by the way, I sell in Germany what's going on here or whatever implication that you currently have you would kind of fine tune it for this this is kind of a nice way just to get some you know ready available answers comparative to hiring or paying for a cons consultation fee for a tax advisor from here we got how about naming it tax advisor pro okay perfect let's go ahead and proceed here so i got a fake business i'm going to load up in here we're going to go over a lot of nitty-gritty stuff here once it gives me the name here what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to configure i'm going to disable some stuff that's not necessary and we'll go ahead and kind of see what our back end looks like or the configure side. So I'm going to load this load. All right. So we're going to go to keep that for now. I'm going to go to configure. I'm going to disable DALE image generation, not too pertinent here. I'm going to keep code interpreter though. So if you do plan on adding files here, it can, you know, do math better. Web browsing this is going to be pertinent on how we proctor this. One thing I want to point out here, uh, just as right off the bat, knowledge, um, knowledge base you can go ahead and upload specific, you know, maybe files associated with your business, e.g. a financial report, whatever it may be, you can upload it here. That being said though, it looks like GBTs actually switched off the ability so you can't necessarily take it off um, from OpenAI training on your data as I can, yeah, I'm not seeing the option anymore. So keep that in mind, OpenAI would be able to see in theory if they chose to do so, see how much you made in a month. That being said though, so can the government. So it's up to your discretion. From here though, let's go and proceed. Also, you can completely use the GBT without even uploading any type of comparable uh, data files. We can just use it in the sense of like, what happens if I sell in the UK? Stuff of this nature. So to start off here, let's go ahead and begin. We're gonna go ahead and say our business name is, and I'm just gonna go ahead and copy over some data that I have over here. Sunshine Electronics LLC. We are our address is so I like doing this because I want to give as much information as possible even if it seems it's not too pertinent to tax and what it may be this is going to help in use cases of like my location is there certain tax laws or certain things I should be aware of by me being registered to this specific address or city code or whatever it may be give as much information as possible so this is going to be a fake business here so we're going to go put our address is this we're going to go ahead and say our business structure is a limited liability company. Now, as you may or may already know, you know that it can get a little bit more specific than that. So is your business structure a limited liability uh, company? Are you a sole owner, a partnership, whatever it may be? So we're going to say partnership here and we'll say um, in California. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and add a little bit more here. So we're going to add our industry and sector, which is going to be consumer electronics for this context. Why are we adding that? As there is certain applicable tax laws that you can give out uh, the way every every single business. I'm okay. First off, I'm not a I'm not a tax. This is based off my experience. I am not a tax advisor at all. I'm just saying off my experience. Certain industries get certain. You know, you don't have to pay this tax, or you don't have to do this, or X Y Z. 
everyone's not treated the same under the guise of the law in the context of your business and how it operates. E.g., if you're a charity, you're not taxed a lot. I don't think you're taxed at all. But from here, we're going to go ahead and go EIN. This is a fake EIN, by the way. And we're just going to provide that as well. So let's go ahead and start here. We're going to say here is the relevant information about our business. I'm going to hit enter here. And we started on the foot of understanding operationally what kind of business we're handling. Okay, so while that loads there, the next most important piece of information I'm going to give this GBT is basically how do we sell and where do we sell? This is probably one of the most important things uh, during tax season to identify because of the fact that if you sell just within your city or within your city or state, comparative to you selling across the entire United States, comparative to you selling internationally, the way your business is treated and what you have to do is entirely different. For example, if you run a business that sells internationally, <laughs> there is a lot more overhead and a lot more stuff you have to register across the world. But from here, we're going to go ahead and just say this. We're going to say, we, uh, to ensure GBT's response are aligned, let's talk about the kind of advice or your guidance you're seeking for. We'll say, we are looking for a general tax advisor for our business. If you can't find a specific answer for our question, search the internet for the best possible answer. So what I'm doing here is as we know, uh, the creation of this video, GBT has been made to have a knowledge base up to April of 2023. Therefore, when we ask certain questions that may be more recent, we wanted to enable or know its ability to search the, uh, the internet using the web browser feature as you saw in the configure and find the answers to those questions. So we're going to go ahead and make sure it does that. So knowing this though, we're going to go ahead and ignore what it's asking here. Let's say conversational style. You can go ahead and switch up how you want your answers here. So therefore you could be like, no, I want every single output to identify the specific penal code or I think it's called penal code and tax law. I'm not too sure. Whatever the specific tax law is, identify the tax law that's being referenced. Give me in bullet point format. Give me a paragraph summary. That's one way of doing it. Or you can do it like I'm doing it here, which is like talk to me like a human or as if I'm in a consultation call with a robot. All right. So it went ahead and just said, let's go play around a little bit. I don't want to play around just yet. I want to add some more uh, information here. We're going to say, okay, we sell only within the United States or we'll say within California. That being said, if you sell outside of California, identify that. If you sell in XYZ country, identify that. This is very pertinent. So for us, we're going to say we just sell in only California. Therefore, we are only going to be taxed within California and obviously at a federal level as well. Knowing this though, we're going to add more information here that we could possibly care about. We can get really nitty gritty here, y'all. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add this following line here. I'm going to say, okay, here is additional information about our company. And here's what I'm adding here. I'm adding our tax filing history. So it knows how many years we've been in business. I'm adding all uh, the accounting method we use, which is curl accounting. And I'm adding the number of employees. Why am I adding these different things? This is so our answers are more lasered in and fine tuned for our specific business. E.g., if you have a certain threshold of employees, you could be susceptible to certain discounts or certain ways the tax law works depending on your state stuff of this nature on top of that you could use this instead of tailoring it towards a general tax advisor maybe you want to tailor it to how do i optimize the most amount of deductibles for my business this is hundreds if not thousands of dollars of tax work that can now be done within gbt really cool stuff here but obviously i think at the end you'd still want someone to give a stamp of approval that is a human and has been trained in this field you can ignore stuff like that for now, though, I'm going to go ahead and say only me. Let me see what's going on here. Let me go back out and back in. All right, y'all. Make sure you save when you're working at this. It seems like it crashed a little bit. So what I'm doing here is I'm front-loading the data that we kind of worked together on. So make sure you save, though, so you can save your spot here. One other thing I want to show y'all is obviously when I play around with it, you'll see this as well. I want to ensure that the information that I'm putting here does get pushed to the instructions as this is the manual that it looks at. So as you see here, we go to California. It's identified that we're talking about a partnership. It's identified that we're talking about the specific address I aligned here, as well as the tax filing history. Good. We're up to date. It knows the information I provided so far of what we care about here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit more information here, such as the doc documentation that we use and the software that we use. So if you're familiar with taxes, you would kind of already know this, but we should tell it and tell GBT what we use. So for software, we're going to use TurboTax Business. 
And for documents, we use the form 1120 and the form W2. And hit enter here and kind of proceed from this. There is additional ways we can kind of go about this. You want to, it's very nuanced. So if your partnership LLC is taxed as an S Corp, or sorry, is it S Corp or is it S LLC? Let me see. Okay, I believe it is S Corp. Basically, S Corps are the most favorable weight. I should stop giving tax advice. This is not tax advice, y'all. This is my experience, but from my experience, S Corps are the best way to get taxed when it comes to a business. This is not advice. This is what I do, okay? Uh, <laughs> from here though, basically we have identified the different forms here. And then the last thing I'd like to do here is add just relevant names that are in the business. So let's see if there's anything that needs to answer here. Is there anything else? Okay. And lastly, this is who is a part of the business. And just provide some random names here. Supposedly, this is who is part of the business. So once we've updated that, what I like to do before, you know, playing around with it is make sure that it has taken a lot of the relevant information that I care about and it's actually pushed, pushed it into the instructions. Sometimes when you tell it to do something and you've made it very clear, hey, I want to do X, Y, Z, such as the address in this context, it won't actually push it to the instructions, but let's make sure it has everything we care about. So that's why we have this right here. Uh, boom. And as you see here, okay, there you go. That's better. So boom here. All right, tax advice is specifically designed for, doo -doo 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 -doo. it provides conversational tax advice tailored to California tax laws. The GPC is informed about the company's specific tax filing history, the coral method, 50 employees, business structure, address, turbo tax, key documents. Okay, okay, okay. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, let's go ahead and ask a question here. For my industry, do I get any tax write-offs or treated differently? And enter here and let's see if we got a bingo. So again, California business in the consumer electronics industry may be eligible for certain tax deductions research and development tax credit, Mac manufacturing equipment deduction. So this is obviously a very general way of approaching this. One thing I want to point out here is, as I said at the beginning of this tutorial, in theory, you could add your, you know, reporting your quarterly reports, quarterly estimates, whatever may be in your business, you could in theory add it there. Now, I already know I'm going to get spammed in the comments or a bunch of people in the comments, oh my gosh, privacy, privacy, privacy. That's your discretion. Personally, if the government knows how much I'm making a month, I could care less if OpenAI knows how much I'm making a month. It's up to your discretion of how you want to proceed in that context. But knowing that once we have code interpreter enabled and we have the knowledge file base, we can actually reference specific uh, files for our taxes that we may want them to look at, e.g. providing a monthly report. Does anything look weird here? Does anything seem like it doesn't match here? And kind of proceed in that manner. Once we're done here, we're just going to hit confirm. Make sure it's only me, unless you want to only me people with a link. So maybe people within your business you want more access to. But if you have, you know, sensitive information, you probably want to do only me. I'm going to hit view GBT here. We're going to jump in. And there we go. So we have created a tax advisor for our business. Now, this context is very much more just asking general questions, e.g. for me personally. One thing I used our personal tax advisor bot for was understanding European law when it comes to, you know, making income over there. And for example, you know, Brexit occurred like years ago that had huge implications because now I have to actually register a VAT for UK. And then I have to alternatively for the entire European Union, I have to register a tax taxable identifiable number for their entire system there. That kind of stuff is very complex. Using this GBT though, it guided me the right ways with the right forms and stuff of this nature to kind of proceed with. If you felt like you learned something today, make sure to leave a like completely free and it helps me here at Corbin AI. If you want to learn more about these GPTs and how you can leverage them, adding APIs or external software outside of it, creating private, public ones, how to even talk to these things, go ahead and check out a playlist at the end here as we made a whole playlist here at Corbin AI on how to start leveraging these GPTs. As you see here, these are pretty powerful stuff here. This is basically undercut a huge sector of the market because a lot of software companies were just like, okay, so you're telling me you can get this kind of value for only 20 bucks a month? I guess you can now. But without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. And yes, surprise, I'm an AI avatar. Make sure to explore more here at Corbin AI, where we demystify AI for your personal and business life. Until next time.